Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Yes, we are back with another Cabral concept. Today, our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday. And today's going to be all about wellness. We're going to be talking about five easy allergy tips for spring. So if you're like I used to be, you might be dealing with some seasonal allergies. And this tip will work for the fall for sure as well. But this is a big one for the spring when things like pollen begin to float around in the ear all around us. Now, for someone like myself, I had allergies my entire life. As a child, I grew up loving to play outside. I was always playing sports, always active. In the spring, the flowers would be coming up. The snow had just melted in Medford, Massachusetts, where I grew up. And we were outside and we were just loving being able to play stickball, baseball, soccer, basketball, uh, street hockey, you name it. We, we played it. We enjoyed it. Had a great time. But I often suffered from headaches each afternoon, itchy eyes, watery eyes, congested nasal passages, hives, etc. Not a very fun time as a child to be dealing with all of those things. Yes, I went through allergy shots as a child. I took Zyrtec. I took Claritin. I took Allegra. I took Claritin D before they pulled it off the market for causing like cardiovascular issues and other issues in people as well. So, you know, I did it all as a child in order to try to combat my allergies. The problem was, and again, we just didn't know as a family, nobody really knew why did I have allergies in the first place? We'll be getting to that today. But as an adult, it was a bit different. You know, as an adult, maybe I'm not uh, playing outside in in the leaves in the fall or, you know, playing outside as much when the uh, pollen is blowing around in the air. But certainly, I still had to deal with debilitating allergies. When I was a young adult, my early 20s, I lived in Boston, Massachusetts, loved my time in the city. And I mean, the city really is so beautiful. I lived right on Commonwealth Ave and there's all of these magnolia trees and all sorts of oaks and other things are in full bloom and it looks beautiful in April and May, but alas, what happens? Well, there's lots of pollen in the air. It covers the cars uh, and of course it blows around in your eyes and in your nose and all over your body. And so what happened was for about three weeks every year, and I really dreaded it, it was typically during the April time frame. If winter lasted a little bit longer, it might move a little bit more into early May because again, it all depends on when those trees are blooming. And I ended up really having to take off a week or two of work in my early 20s every single allergy season. And then happened for about four to five years. This is from, let's say, like 23 years old to about 27 years old. And it because, again, people, if you've never had allergies before, you don't know how debilitating it is. First of all, you feel terrible. You're just completely exhausted. Allergies ramp up the immune system. You're producing massive amounts of inflammatory cytokines, histamines, you have brain fog, you are just exhausted. And then if you're doing what I was doing in my early 20s and taking two Benadryl every three to six hours to try to combat it with still no luck at all, um, you you were feeling even more fatigued, even more tired. So uh, believe me, I had tried it all. I had tried the Flonase. I had tried all sorts of, uh, even even was doing some neti pot, which was you know mildly comforting for a, a temporary period of time. And, uh, and I was taking every medication under the sun. The problem was it still wasn't enough to keep me uh, having to live inside of my home. Like that was it. My bubble, I closed the doors. I just got away from everything. Right. And I would still even again, cause even that permeated through the windows permeated when people came in and out. So 
It was a really tough time. But alas, I didn't know that I'd ever ever be able to figure that one out. Uh, I was. I was able to get rid of my allergies once and for all by figuring out food sensitivities and rebalancing my gut. You might say, what does rebalancing your gut have anything to do with outside external exogenous allergies? Like I had dust, mold, pollen as my main allergies. And Well, you know, you have to understand that your immune system is intimately linked with your digestive system. So if 80% of your immune system lies in and around your digestive tract and you have candida overgrowth or parasites or H. pylori or SIBO, I had three out of the four, and you have multiple food sensitivities and you're eating those and those are causing inflammation, you can see how your immune system may be inflamed. And because of that, it's called an exaggerated Th2 immune dominance. That is what leads to a greater propensity of allergies. I also am prone to mastocytosis in my genes. That's why genetics matter But there's a reason why I had allergies for the first 27 years of my life, and now I don't, right? So there is a, right, same genes, I'm the same person. Uh, My genes didn't get any better, but what happened was the terrain of my body got better, got healthier. And so I'm not going to go over that on today's show. I've done that many times, Um, and so we will give you lots and lots of links today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2238, stephencabral.com forward slash 2238. If you want to head over there now, I'm going to give you a lot more follow-up shows on getting the root cause of allergies. You can also read my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. It is free. You just pay shipping and handling. That's at stephencabral.com. Yeah, so we're going to give you all those tips for sure. But what I want to do is, or resources, I should say, I want to give you five tips right now so that if you're dealing with terrible allergies like I did, so debilitating that you have to take time off from work, uh, or, you know, just mild, well, we can improve that no matter what. Like, we're going to be able to improve that. So we're talking about symptomatic relief here today, right? I am always talking about root cause relief, but trust me, if you're living with allergies or migraines or anything, you want symptomatic relief as well. And I'm not against that whatsoever. So let's help you with some symptomatic relief. And then what we can do is we can work on the root cause over the next four months, six months or so. Okay. So here are my five tips for you. These are things that I used to do every single time it was allergy season. Now, the amazing thing is I don't have to worry about this at all because spring is one of my favorite seasons. I love fall and I love spring. I love spring. I love the in-between seasons. I've always loved the in-between seasons. Probably fall in Maine is my favorite season. I don't think that you can beat that anywhere in the world. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't trade that for anything else. Um, spring in New England is, ama- is amazing because there's this sense of like euphoria. You just get out of just... I mean, when people look at the forecast for Boston, like, oh, it's 28 degrees, it's 32 degrees. What they don't understand is the real feel is in the single digits to low teens. And that's because the wind chill off of the water is absolutely freezing, right? So that's that's the difference. So when you get spring, you start to get like, yeah, these cool breezes are so so sure. But once you hit, I know this is going to sound strange, once you start to hit those low 50 days, right, Fahrenheit, the mid 50s, low 50s, people are outside in shorts and a t-shirt as if it's summertime, right? Because you're coming out of this, such a cold winter. 30 degrees is a huge change in temperature. And, uh, and I think we're all just happy to have been through another New England winter. Very, very harsh. People in Chicago, I know, can uh, understand in a, a lot of places around the uh, the north of the U.S. So here's the thing, though. Let's get into these five al- easy allergy tips. These really are easy ones. I didn't want to make them complex, but this is what you want to do. For the three or four weeks that you might be vulnerable during allergy season, peak allergy season, close the windows Keep them closed. Keep the door closed. Do not allow the pollen to blow in. If it blows in, it's going to go all over your couch, all over your furniture. You're going to sit then in that and you have no escape from the outside. Do not turn the outside into your inside. Or a better way to phrase it would be, don't turn the inside of your house into the outside. Keep the doors closed. I know a lot of people might love that outside breeze and the fresh air. Believe me, I do as well, and I get it. But for those couple weeks period of time, allow yourself to breathe easier in your own sanctuary, and that needs to be your home. So close the windows, keep the door closed, and use an air filter. My favorite air filters are at stephencabral.com forward slash 
resources. These are not my air filters. These are not any of my companies. They are companies that I use myself personally to this day. I have an air filter in my office. I have two in my home. Um, and I have one in Maine as well. So these are things that I use every single day uh, myself, and I highly recommend it to you because they will filter out 99 plus percent of all uh, particulate, and that includes mold and uh, it includes pollen as well. All right, so that's tip number one. Keep the outside the outside and then filter the air inside your house. All right, number two is this. When you do have to go outside, certainly limit your exposure, but when you do have to go outside, this is a big one. And again, this is just for me going through it myself. Wear sunglasses. Okay, so wear sunglasses. Why? You don't want the pollen blowing in your eyes. The worst part of my allergies were my eyes. My eyes are always my weak spot. They're always my sensitive spot. They always have been. Um, and that's and I come from a long line of, uh, of itchy eyes, puffy eye people. And my grandmother uh, had it, my mom and myself. And unfortunately, my youngest daughter, you could tell since she was like 18 months or two years old. My oldest daughter, my wife, not at all. My dad, not at all. My grandfather, not at all. Uh, it's just, and I, I can explain this uh, on a future show and, and part of its anatomy, part of its genetics. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, but my eyes have always been my weak spot. It's, it's okay. We all have something, right? So wear sunglasses. Keep the pollen out of your eyes. I used to have the itchiest, most red dry, like literally my eyes were, uh, and this is literal, my eyes were bleeding from how dry and cracked they were from allergies. It was awful. So wear sunglasses, uh, keep the pollen out of your eyes, a hat if possible, or a light coat, and a light coat. Why do I recommend this? Because when you come in your home, you're going to take off your sunglasses, you're going to take off your coat, you're going to take off your hat and leave them at the door, right? Or leave them outside. Because you don't want to bring the pollen inside. What you are trying to do is limit your exposure wherever you go. Shake them off outside, get rid of it, come back in your house, right? Really important. This was actually very big for me. It was very helpful. The sunglasses alone was really helpful. Um, the hat you'll learn about in just a second, that's helpful as well. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It really does matter. It seems like a small thing, but if you don't have pollen blown around in your eyes, uh, your eyes don't get as itchy. That's for sure. All right. The third one is this. This goes along with number two. Before bed, this was a game changer as well for me. You're going to take a shower. Okay, you're going to take a warm shower, right? This isn't the time to be stimulating your immune, your nervous system and immune system with cold showers. You're going to take a warm shower. You're going to calm your central nervous system. You're going to use a neti pot, right? Very inexpensive to get a neti pot. You're going to put a couple drops of citricidal in there if you'd like, um, or just some nausea oil along with water and a little bit of that sea salt. And you are going to flush your nasal passages and sinuses. Get the pollen out of them right? Get the outside world out of your nasal passages. That's where it's going to be stored. That's what's going to cause inflammation. Plus the shower, you're going to shampoo and wash your hair. Why are you going to do that? You're going to get the pollen out of your hair. Why does that matter? Because when you put your head on your pillow, you're going to get pollen all over your pillow. Then you're going to rub your eyes in it. You're going to wake up a swollen, puffy human like I used to the next morning. All right. So you're not going to wear the same clothes to bed. Some people wear the same clothes. Don't wear the same clothes to bed, right? Throw those right in the hamper, throw them in the washing machine. And here's another tip for you. Every day to two days, change your pillowcase. I am. I do not wash my sheets. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Think what you may. It's okay. Don't wash them as often as I should sheet wise, but I wash my pillowcases every couple days. And that it's easy for me because here's what I do. I bought a whole three pillowcases. That's it. It was worth the investment, right? So I bought three bamboo pillowcases. All you can see all the different bamboo sheets that I recommend at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Bamboo, bamboo pillowcases are amazing. They're hypoallergenic, super soft, um, easy on the skin. And all I do is after a couple of days, take the pillowcase and I throw it in the hamper for it to be washed. That's it. So take a shower, use a neti pot, don't wear the day's clothes in your bed every couple of days, change your pillowcase. If you're also someone that gets acne or clogged pores easily, change your pillowcase every couple of days. Remember, you sweat at night, the uh, oil gets onto the pillowcase, then that can get into the face as well. So that was a big tip. All right, number three, that was number three. Uh, number four is lower your histamine food intake during allergy season. You might never have to worry about this any other time, but during allergy season, 
lower those histamines. I'm going to link up another show on this, okay? So head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2238, stephencabral.com forward slash 2238 for my additional shows on histamines. This is a game changer as well. My allergies dropped in half when I emptied my rain barrel, right? You've heard about the rain barrel effect before. Well, how was I filling up my rain barrel in terms of allergies? I was eating aged foods. Which What is aged foods? Well, anything that's literally leftovers or cheeses, unless it's fresh cheese, but dairy for the most part will exacerbate most people's allergies. Um, wine or alcohol is going to be aged on there as well. So first, don't eat any aged foods. Fresh food, all right? Fresh foods. The next is smoke. Now, fresh food can also be frozen fruit in your smoothie, frozen veggies with your dinner. I remember, I don't want to complicate your life. I'm not saying that at all. Like you can still eat fruit. You can still eat your vegetables. You can still eat fresh meat or fresh fish or poultry or, you know, chickpeas, like whatever you want. You can still do that. Um, all I'm saying is careful on the leftovers. They're just going to have higher histamines, careful on the aged cheeses. And I would definitely not drink any alcohol during allergy season. All right, the next item out of the three is smoked foods. Don't eat any smoked foods during allergy season. Smoke, first of all, it's a carcinogen. But second, is smoke is going to exacerbate your allergies to such a high degree. It really is. The third one is fermented foods, right? So you might say, I love eating fermented foods because I get all my probiotics and some prebiotics in there. It's the greatest thing ever. Well, if you feel that way, that's okay. But what I want to do is I just, during that allergy season, during that peak time, I want to say no fermented foods. So fermented, uh, again, fermented foods are your sauerkrauts and your beets and whatever else you might ferment, right? That, that's it. Kombucha, uh, alcohol is obviously fermented as well. That's how they make it. And so that's it. So aged, smoked, fermented foods, uh, go easy on. And then get all of my other low histamine food recommendations at stephencabral.com forward slash 2238 because there's some spices in there and other items like that that you'll want to go easy on. All right. And number five, the five easy tips. So this is number five, right? To reduce allergies is to take a natural antihistamine. All right. Some things have been proven, clinically proven to reduce histamine levels in your body. What does that do? It helps you empty your rain barrel, right? So we're reducing exposure. We talked about that before. Don't bring it into bed for the next eight hours. Uh, we're talking about get it out of your sinus passages with a neti pot. We're talking about don't fill up your rain barrel with high histamine foods. Now we're talking about emptying that rain barrel. I'm not telling you not to use your allergy medication or whatever you use. That's up to you. I can't give you medical advice. I can't give you any medical treatment plans. But what I can do is provide natural things that help me. So bromelain. Bromelain is a fantastic one that has been shown to uh, support a healthy immune system. Um, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, works along with bromine, uh, or I should say not bromine, uh, bromelain, which basically is an enzyme from pineapples. Uh, and it helps to also reduce or thin mucus secretions, which is great for an inflamed nasal passage. Uh, vitamin C, fantastic. I love the full spectrum vitamin C, which has acerola berry, hibiscus, hesperidin, all sorts of great uh, vitamin Cs, but I don't use it during allergy season. I use alkalizing vitamin C. You want to use ascorbic acid. I know a lot of people say you should only use food-based, but again, there's that's uh, that's just not understanding um, how vitamin C works. It's not used in a bubble. You eat vitamin C along with all the food for the day and uh, ascorbic acid for sure. Uh, I use that during uh, non-food-based during allergy season. I like the alkalizing vitamin C because it, can, it contains a bicarbonate. Many people do really well by adding a bicarbonate to help uh, alkalize, and I'm using that in air quotes, their overall system. And again, we all know that the blood maintains a steady pH of 7.356. However, it does that using certain minerals, and the bicarbonates help to a much greater degree. A lot of people find tremendous benefit with just the alkalizing vitamin C. The last one, though, is quercetin. Quercetin, clinically proven at higher dosages to work as an antihistamine, but it works as so much more. It helps with zinc, et cetera. So zinc's a great one. But anyway, those are the ones I recommend. Uh, it's really simple. This is what I do. I'm, again, I'm not giving you a medical treatment plan. During peak allergy time, I used Hist Pro. It's a product called Hist Pro, H I S T. H-I-S-T-P-R-O. Uh, I use three capsules three times a day. It's that easy. Three capsules breakfast, three capsules lunch, three capsules dinner. And I use alkalizing vitamin C, a half a scoop 
three times per day as needed away from food. Uh, so that's a, upon waking, before bed, and then typically you take it mid-morning, mid-afternoon. That's it. Then that's that's exactly what I do. It's that simple. It contains everything you need. And then um, I actually use Hispro three capsules a day, even at the off season. I just don't use it at three capsules three times a day as I would during uh, a high allergy time. So that's it. As I said before, um, those are going to help you when it's symptomatic. But really, in the long term, you want to be testing what's wrong with your gut with something like the Candida Metabolic and Vitamins Test, the Bacteria and Parasite Stool Test, the IgG Food Sensitivity Test. You can find those at stephencabral.com for slash labs. You can run them with your own naturopathic doctor, integrative health practitioner. Uh, you want to rebalance the gut, maybe with a CBO protocol. You want to do something to address those long term. But in the meantime, get rid of those symptoms, feel well, enjoy the spring season. Take care, everyone. And of course, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.